mailbag time bunch of stuff here i'm sure there's some interesting things in here which well, the first thing i did get a package of like a whole bunch of packages in it and this was just in there with that envelope all the other stuff had envelopes i'm not quite sure what these are yet let's open it up and have a look and don't forget there'll always be links down below for items i'll give you links for okay some headers these are some surface mount headers single in line header is that 20 pin or something i've got projects in mind for this More headers, the looks of it. These ones are like an offset, so you can see there, there. No, get it there, you can see that way. So you can flush mount them. So if you want to surface mount these, you can do that. And it will, that obviously the block part will sit on the PCB and that can be mounted to a pad. And that gives you like an end connector. I didn't have anything like this before. And I have actually used things like this before in that way. Not very successfully, because I had to like basically tip them onto the board like this to make them work. I thought I'd get some of these, I saw these. These are probably good to have around. It's a suction cup mount. Excellent. I have something similar here somewhere. If I can find it. I've got these dash cams and these suction cups are knackered. And I I think I purchased this one just randomly thinking it might be okay. Scaling's a bit off again. There's, there's that thing with me not checking measurements. I've also got these ones which are knackered as well. This one's okay. But I've got another one which is exactly the same as this. But the pad is knackered on that as well. But this is a different system. So I was hoping I could use this. I might even better use the actual post that's inside it. I'm not sure yet. But yeah, I need to repair some of these. I may be looking at stripping it down and just taking the post out and maybe using that post and this suction cup piece on those other pieces, but I don't know. I think that's easier. Now, I think I might have got a bit carried away because that never happens, right? I, ne I never ever get carried away when I buy things. I never buy spares. I never buy different versions. I, I, I always moderate what I'm doing there <laughs> so these are some more headers these are angle ones got some different types as well a few different types I'll cover them all in a minute so these are some angle headers these are round pin types so better quality these ones cost a bit more but they're also very compact so that could be useful this other one here is some more surface mount but these are some rectangular pins a bit like the other ones I showed before actually similar thing these ones here are some more round pin, I think. These round pin? Yep, round pin, but just angle. So these are male round pin type, which obviously interface to the, uh, the female ones here. And we've got some more surface mount ones here, which are single in line again. Some more of the same thing, some more square pin ones. So I've got loads of these now. I did not get carried away. Okay. Yeah, I. I do not get carried away buying headers. I don't get carried away buying headers. Okay, just, just so we're clear. Right, okay. These are some USB modules, USB C modules. So you got 12 to 96 volts in, 96 volts, and you got USB C output here, and also an A. So I think this is power delivery, if I remember rightly. Three of these, I think, are all the same. This is 9 to 35 volts, same sort of deal too. USB C and USB A. So I was thinking about using these things to power a Raspberry Pi 5. That is the intention, anyway. Obviously, I need to load test them, see how they can actually handle the current. They need to better handle 5 amps, right? In theory, the Raspberry Pi 5 can pull 5 amps from the USB-C. I've actually measured it whilst it's running, because I've set it up now as a web server and it's all running. It's only pulling like an amp to one and a half amps. It's sort of peak about 1.8 amps or something like that. It wasn't pulling that much. This is at 5 volts. So although they call it a power delivery system, it's not actually power delivery. It's running at 5 volts. It doesn't go to 9 volts or anything like that. But they haven't designed it that way. They haven't got a um, power delivery circuit on the Raspberry Pi which I think is a missed opportunity. But, you know, instead it has to be provide five amps through a USB-C cable. And that's a lot of current to go through some little wires, by the way. That's significant. I think it's actually excessive. That's based upon using the USB ports on it to some kind of capacity where they're draining a lot of power through the USBs. In my situation, the lower current's fine. I'm not going to be using high currents, but I want to set up a situation where I'm going to have a barrel jack type input with one of these. Hopefully this one will work, the smaller one, because that would be better. Mainly because I've got two of them. Um, I actually thought I'd purchase two of those as well. Maybe I didn't. 
being barrel jack means I can just plug it in, plug in the USB cable, and off we go. And if it fails in the field, because who knows how reliable these are going to be, I'll get another one, plug that one in, replace it. You know, in a matter of seconds, it'll be replaced. I like redundancy and I like backup. I like to have backups. So ultimately, what I actually want to do is have this backed up in another way. I've actually got a dual supply coming in on a 12 volt system. I'll explain what we've got to set up in the bus. Right, I'm going to drift off slightly from normal. <laughs> so, in the motorhome, we run events. We go to events and we book at events and we run them from there. That's currently got a Vasi Pi 3B, Plus, which I'm replacing with a 5. I've already put it in there, set it up, configured it. I know it's working, but it's running off a mains powered plug pack, which is fine, but it's got no redundancy. So if the 240 volts supply were to trip out because the inverter's tripped out for some reason or some of like that, which has happened in the past, but although that's before I changed the inverter to a beefy one, hasn't done it since, but I still like to have that backup. It's now got dual supplies that go to a 5 volt buck converter, and that 5 volt buck converter is powering the Raspberry Pi. I need to do the same thing to this. But I've got two 12 volt supplies coming in. This going off 12 volts. So, and it's barrel jack, so instead of plugging into the 5 volt buck converter, which is what it's currently doing, I can plug it into one of these and power the USB-C instead, which gives you multiple redundancies. Okay, it's manual redundancy, but it's still redundancy. So if one of these blows, I can plug in another one, carry on. If the Ryzy Pi fails, I can plug it into the original 5 volt buck converter and switch back to the original Raspberry Pi and just import the data into it, which doesn't take that long, it takes a few minutes. I like to have backups, it's very important to me. Now, my experience is that once you have a backup in place, you don't bloody well need it. If you have a backup, your chance of actually needing to use it is quite low. I mean, if you're talking about backup equipment like these things, fairly, I mean, these, you know, consumables, I suppose, but this sort of thing, yes. But in the systems where you have multiple backups and planned coverage like that, your chance of actually needing to use it is quite low. When you don't have a backup, that's when it's almost guaranteed to fail. It's just the way it works. It's some more hitters. <laughs> uh, which ones are these? These are some really small rectangular pin ones. Right, but they're really short ones for nice tight spaces. So you can actually do like PCB interconnects with these in a nice confined space. Okay, this is definitely getting ridiculous. <laughs> now, it could be some more headers. 40 pin. <laughs> Same sort of thing as I just showed, but these are female ones. Surface mount jaw in line. Here you go. Jaw in line surface mount, that's what these are. These are some single end lines, I think. Yeah, compact single end lines. I don't have a header problem. Not anymore, anyway. Magnifier. Okay, now I purchased a magnifier locally. At the time, I was sort of thinking, should I get two? And in the end, I decided not to. I think I should have done, but I didn't. But after a bit of searching, I found exactly the same one on AliExpress. And it was a third the price. Here's one I've already got. You'll see, they look identical. This one's a bit dusty, it's sitting around. <laughs> it's got a little light on it. And I can't what the magnification was on it now. But anyway, you can see, it works. So, I've got another one. You always need a spare. Now if you can guess where this package came from, Put it down below in the comments. It might not be where you think it's from. Or it could be, I, I don't know. This is some rather expensive wire. There's five meters of this stuff here. I use this for my repairs. It's supposed to be black, but is that just like a... I guess it's just like a dust on it or something. Maybe it's got like a talc on it, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's supposed to be black, but it's grey. <laughs> mm -hmm. Typically says black. This stuff's five meters. It's four millimeter cross section, and this stuff is twenty dollars a meter. I'm glad it was already sitting down. Right. 
something inspired me to get these. I don't know exactly what it was, but something inspired me. Cable shears. So you have your cat and cables. You've got some big chunky cables. You can see what sort of size you can get out of this thing. And it will... Yeah, that's pretty sharp. Yep, yeah, very sharp. So you can shear through cables quite easily. Now, I've been wanting to get something like this for ages. I've been using side cutters and, you know, be on there with two hands, a pair of side cutters trying to cut through these things. I'm trying to cut like zero gauge or two gauge cables and all that. You kind of need something like this. Yeah, I finally decided to get some. I was looking for something else at the time and I saw this pop up on AliExpress. I thought, ah, I think I'll get one of them because it'll be useful. Cutting big gauge cables, almost essential, I reckon. How good it actually does a job, I don't know, but they feel really sharp. Do they stay sharp? We've got no idea. Okay, last thing. Marginal packaging. Paper on the top only, nothing on the bottom, nothing on the sides. No marginal, maybe stuff down the sides a little bit. But it's double box, so it should be fine anyway. It's a sink all thing. So, it's the R250. This is relatively cheap. So it's an SCR on Triac tester. Now it's got these different manuals here. It's got the 224 manual as well, which I find interesting. Um, because it's not the 224, it's a 250. At least that's what I think is supposed to be in here. It's supposed to be a 250. Yep, 250. So, as you can see, it looks basically new in box, probably never used. It looks like it's never used. Look, still, I don't know, it could be, it could be repackaged, but it looks like new. So, new old stock, it looks like. This is for looking up test leads to this, so you can test SCRs and trikes. You hook up this to a Sencore capacity inductor test the thing. Can't remember what the model numbers are now, which it actually supports. It just says Z meter, so any you of know, those Z meter range, I suppose. This thing outputs a high voltage, so this can use it to do the testing. And then you can configure the switches here to allow for the configuration of the device. Battery test it takes three AAs, so probably no batteries in it. It seems it looks brand new, unused. I don't think it's ever been used, so. I think it's fine. I've got this accessory thinking I might find it useful. Sometimes you want to do high voltage testing on devices and you know I've got a um, what was it Heathkit yeah Heathkit curve tracer but it's only relatively low voltage right so I can only do I think like 70 volts or something like that to do. Can't do exactly now but if you want to do something more high powered then this might be the way to go. There you go, circuit diagram. I'll give you a clue to use it. See that? Maybe. I'll tip it downwards so you get, get light off it. Yeah, take a picture if you want that. <laughs> Pretty simple. That's probably why they're not very expensive because it's basically a box of switches and a few discrete components in it. That's probably why they're so cheap. And so it also came the manual for the SCR 224, which is for a previous version. This is meant for the LC53 and a CA55 meters. So it's not actually meant for this unit, but I suppose it's applicable in some ways. Anyway, this like it's probably got mixed up at some point in this history, but that's fine. Now I've got to try and get it back in the packaging without bending the box and stuff up. Sometimes it's a good idea to just get various things you think you may potentially need if the price is right because this was cheap it was worth doing if it was not cheap then obviously probably not worth doing taking a gamble and getting something which you probably may never use but this wasn't that expensive and as you can see it's in mint condition worth getting if I need to do a high voltage test on an SCR or Triac this could be very useful I do have a SCR and Triac tester I've got the peak one which is down here somewhere where is that? Yeah, I've got this, so this can do some testing, but obviously this is only low voltage. This can show high voltages then. That gives it an alternative use case. Anyway, that's the mailbag. So, other videos to watch down below there. Subscribe over there, or well, about there somewhere, if you're not really subscribed. 
and there's a Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel, give a couple of dollars a month and it goes to buying things from mailbag and buying bits of test gear like this or weird curiosities from eBay and usually for things for me to fix. I like to make videos fixing things and the Patreon support helps me to do that. Here's a clue right here. This was purchased using Patreon money. You'll find out what it is soon enough. Did you like?